Hey YouTube, how's it going? Kevin Cleary here with a knife video for you. And today I have a very special video. This is one of the few custom knives that I've had and it's probably the one that I've been most excited about. This is a real highlight in my collection. Uh, this is the Andrew Demko 8015. And uh, this is a knife that I've loved for a long time and I'd really resigned myself to not being able to get one. Of course, I love Andrew Demko and his work. Um, the Cold Steel Formax was probably, it, it was what I thought would be probably the closest thing that I would ever have to a custom Demko until I actually had one. Uh, so very, very exciting. And I've got to give a huge amount of credit to the knife community, uh, a number of people, Frankie and Bird, Dr. Frankie, Nick Shabazz helped me be able to get this knife. Uh, not only that, but uh, those of you who bought knives in the sale. When I was trying to get this, it was kind of time sensitive, so I posted it for sale of a few different things, and a number of you stepped up, bought that stuff, and it gave it allowed me to get the finances in place to cover this, which was totally, totally awesome. So a huge thank you, and it actually makes the knife mean even more that the community kind of contributed in that way, and so. Uh, thank you so much for doing that. Really, really cool. Uh, now, uh, let's go ahead and get into a little bit of background on Andrew Demko. Andrew Demko, if you're not familiar with the name right away, you're probably familiar with his designs. He does work for Cold Steel, and he's kind of the brains behind a number of different knives of theirs. Uh, the Ultimate Hunter, the American Lawman, the, uh, I think the Raja series of knives, those great big, sort of big recurve, um, kukri style knives. Uh, anyway, yeah, you've probably seen his work and you've probably seen him. He's in all the Cold Steel videos where they, you know, uh, do all the testing of the two different knives, a Cold Steel versus whatever else. So he's the guy you're hating on when you, when you make your comments on those videos. Um, but he does really, really good work. He's a great knife maker. Now, there are a few themes that he has. Everything he does is pretty overbuilt, pretty heavy duty. It's also pretty practical. This blade shape is pretty standard for him just because it's such a great working blade shape. He does really thin edges, which are awesome. So all of his knives, even if it's super thick blade stock, his knives tend to slice pretty well. Uh, and he does things overbuilt. You can see this thing is pretty heavy duty. And that, again, is kind of part of his style. Okay, so if you're not familiar with his designs at all, I mean, go ahead and check out uh, some, do some Googling and you'll see, and you'll definitely see his influence then in a lot of the Cold Steel stuff as well. By the way, since we're talking about Andrew Demko and Cold Steel, um, I have heard that there are talks in the works about how Cold Steel can uh, utilize the Scorpion lock that's found on this knife. And so likely within the next... I don't know, year or two years, they'll be coming, something from Cold Steel will come out with this lock. So if you really like it, but it's just not in the cards for you, sort of like it wasn't in the cards for me, um, you can wait and there will be something production with a Scorpion lock, I would suspect in the next, I don't know, it was about, you know, it was last year when I heard that they were in, in some discussions about Cold Steel doing something production. So who knows how long that kind of thing takes, uh, but there have been some discussions. Let's just leave it at that. Uh, finally, let's get to the knife itself. This is a very heavy duty knife, okay? But it's one that I find pretty well balanced. And that's something that you'll hear me talk about on my channel a lot. A knife that just goes totally over the top, sort of like, like a Medford Praetorian, or um, in fact, even Striders. I, I find they, they, they push the scale too far toward hard use and they end up making knives that aren't useful for a lot of regular cutting tasks. Where this one, no, it's really nicely balanced. It's not crazy heavy. The blade is nice and thin behind the edge, so it still cuts really, really well. It's, it's ergonomic. Economic, you know, it, although you're, yes, it's a little heavier and, and the components are quite large, it still functions really well as a cutting tool. And that's kind of a, a major thing for me. Uh, so size and weight on this guy, eight and five eighths inches overall, three and three quarter inches on the blade there. And you can see it's not all cutting edge. So it's probably three and a half inches of cutting edge or so. Um, five and one eighth is the closed length. Now that's an interesting number because I measured to the blade tang here, but you can sort of see how the blade tang comes out past the handle, making that, you know, if you just measured the handle, right, you'd be just under five inches. So, I mean, that's, you still want the five eighths number because that's how much room it's going to take up in your pocket. But nonetheless, just to kind of give you how I measured that. Um, <clears throat> 6.5 ounces is the weight on this guy. It's a little thick, okay? This dimension here is about 5 8 so it's pretty thick. Um, not, it's just under 5 8 in fact. Now, I don't have a huge issue carrying it. 
Um, and finally, a number of you have asked, what about the grip size? So how many, how much room do I actually have for my hand? It's about four inches, maybe a little over four inches between these two sort of choil cutouts here. Now you do also on this knife have a spot that you can choke up a little further. And so that's how, you know, that's how the, the handle space works out. Um, in terms of carrying this knife on a daily basis, it's a little heavy, it's a little big, but number one, if you're into custom knives, you're definitely used to dealing with that. A lot of custom knives are, are bigger and, and heavier than a lot of production options that are out there. Uh, but also, it's, it's, and it also, I guess, it's not something you're going to want to carry in your dress pants. And, and I don't think you would. Look at this knife. It, you know, it's obviously a pretty hard use type of design. And, you know, in a pair of 5.11s or a pair of jeans or something like that, you're going to have no issue. But yeah, if you're, you know, got, if you got like some linen church pants on, well, it's not going to work very well. Okay. Uh, so let's go ahead now and talk about the blade. All right. Uh, one thing that's really, really cool about this, and Andrew has done a great job, but this is, of course, a hand ground blade. And that, to me, is really, really special. Um, it is, you know, you've got stone wash on the flats and then grinder satin on the bevels and on the swedge here. The swedge is pretty aggressive, although I like that he's kept some area for your thumb up here. And, and Demco kind of does that. His knives are very um, function over form. And so... Hold on, I'm gonna to try to get the fingerprints off at least a little bit. And so you would expect him to, you know, think that kind of thing through. And he has done a really good job. Now, very thin behind the edge, which I've gotta say is really, really nice because it makes this a great slicing knife uh, and is pretty customary for Andrew Demko's work. He tends to get knives that, that slice really well. And you'll hear that comment a lot of times on all of his knives. It's even true of the Cold Steel Formax that this actually slices pretty well, which is rare for a knife in this kind of category, okay? Uh, but it is something I look for. Uh, in terms of edge retention, S35VN, of course, is a great steel, but I have to make this comment, uh, and this is one of the things that other custom, uh, the guys who are really into custom knives will often comment on, okay? So S35VN, you know, I have some expectations about it. I have a few blades in S35VN. Um, my pair of two is S35. Um, what else is S35? I, you know, I have a few. Anyway, um, and I kind of have an idea in my mind of how it's going to perform. It's going to perform well, but this is like off the charts well. And I think it's because um, being a custom, it gets that extra personal attention. So the heat treat is going to be right up there. And again, I've often heard guys talk about, you know, custom makers getting the most out of their steels where a production company is not going to maybe do, is not going to maximize that in the same way. And certainly this knife tends to hold an edge really, really crazy well. And initially I was like, it doesn't seem right. I even uh, messaged uh, Demco to ask him, what is the steel? And he said, no, it's S35VN. Uh, some of these are made in 20CV. I think there's some in AEBL. Uh, I've heard of a couple of others anyway, but this one is S35VN, but it is really, really good. So I've got to give some credit there as well. In terms of using this, it's a great balance. And you guys, you know, like I've been saying about the knife overall, this is a great balance between toughness, durability, and cutting power. So yeah, if you want to cut up an apple, this will do it. It'll split an apple a little bit, depending on the size of the apple, but... <clears throat> If you want to jam this into a tree and, you know, pry off some, some kindling or something like that, it'll do that too. It's a really, really nice, well-rounded blade. And that is the main thing that I really, really look for in my folders, that the blade is just kind of a really nice balance. Okay, so... <coughs> Uh, that's what we have for the blade. Moving on to lockup and deployment. This is where we want to spend a little bit more time. Uh, this Scorpion lock is not something a lot of people are used to, but it's fairly simple in its operation. Essentially, you have a lock bar like what you get in a, in a typical back lock knife. The way it works, though, instead of having... Uh, what have I got here that I can show you? Uh, so here is a back lock with the... Um, with a triad lock, and you can see, if you look at the back of the blade, there you go, there's sort of a, a groove, okay, a space like this, and, and a piece of the, the lock bar drops into here. Now in the triad lock, you're gonna add a lock bar into that equation, but a typical back lock, that's how it works. You just got a piece blocking into the back. Well, 
Here, you've got that same idea, only instead it's a bar and the back lock is exposed and the way you unlock it is just to lift up. So instead of, you know, pushing on something back here, you're just lifting the bar itself. He's made it accessible to you. And the, the, there's a couple of cool things about this. Number one, the simplicity is great. Uh, there is one extra bit of complexity. Back in here, there is a coil spring that puts pressure on this to keep this end down. That necessitates you lifting it up like that. But the, the simplicity of this is great. You've just got a bar falling into a groove. What could be simpler than that and more functional? Now, one thing I will say is when you first close it, especially if you close it, let's see if I can get it to do it. So I've closed this like as gently as I can and I can get a teeny bit of blade play. Now, as soon as I touch this bar in any way, it settles in and it's solid as a rock, okay? So now it, it doesn't move at all. And in fact, even if I do it really gently and then I just wiggle the blade, what happens is as I wiggle it just a little bit, the lock kind of falls into place and it still ends up rock solid. Um, <clears throat> the other cool advantage is like a frame lock, when you're holding this, right, when you're doing something with the knife, you're putting pressure on that lock bar, holding it more solidly in place, which again is really, really cool. Uh, so I will say this, some of these have a secondary lock back here that essentially stops this part from being able to move and so therefore stops you from being able to lift up this bar. Uh, this this one doesn't have it, and there are a few out there now. I think some of the ones at Blade HQ don't have this as well. Uh, they are a little bit cheaper, I think. Uh, but I think that's a perfect way to go with these, because really that, that secondary lock is not something that... Uh, that I'm interested in at all. And you'll actually see some people complaining about it as sort of unnecessary and I'm kind of in that boat. So uh, this works out really, really well. So that's the lock, okay? And now after we move on from that, it, it is on Teflon washers and that's pretty common of custom makers. And I think it's just because they're, they're getting that smoothness out of it, okay? Teflon does have a lower coefficient of friction than phosphor bronze. So uh, it's going to be a little, it's gonna slide a little nicer on the blade and give you a really nice action. And although it's not as tough, which is an issue, uh, the nice thing about custom knives is, generally speaking, you're going to get very, very good um, customer service. You're going to get somebody who really stands behind what they've made. And that's, you know, I'm sure there's a few makers who are, you know, questionable in that regard, but most of the time, they're going to do a pretty darn good job with that aspect of things. Uh, so, lockup and deployment, that's the Scorpion lock, that's how it works. Let's pick out a couple of little details. Notice this pin that's in the blade here, that's for the closed stop position right up here. At the back, let's see if I can show you. Notice it, there's a cutout for it, but it doesn't actually touch. So at the back, the only thing that's touching is this bar falling into the groove. All right, now one thing that I think is cool, actually let's, let's hold off on that before, until we're done. Um, you can, this is a knife that's really fidgety, so uh, you can kind of mess with the, the pivot and get it to open and close if you're not on camera like I am right now and uh, messing it up in front of everybody. <laughs> but it, when I'm at my house doing this on my own, I can easily get this to flip open and closed. Just can't do it for you guys right now. Um, <clears throat> One thing I have to say that's pretty neat, and when I think about the time and energy that would have had to be involved in this. So, the way the detent on this works is the detent is created by the relationship between the tang of the blade and the spring tension and the bar there. So, see how the bar has to kind of pop over that little bit of a, a ledge in order to allow the knife to open. So that creates the detent, and I've got to give credit the amount of work that it must have taken, and I'd be interested to know how many prototypes did you have to do before you got that little angle and that rounded corner just right so that the knife would you know, open reliably. Uh, I'd be very, very curious about that, but it's pretty neat and, and it's a really good way. Yeah, I don't know. I always appreciate when someone finds a new and some and fairly simple way of, of achieving some task. And that's really a neat way of getting your detent to work. So there you go. That's lockup and deployment. Very impressive, very fidget friendly. Okay, I will say this is a knife that I have a bad habit of walking around the house, flipping open and closed, driving my wife crazy. Uh, let me know down in the comments below if you guys have that problem and if your wife is like mine. Would you quit flipping that knife all the time? 
All right. <laughs> uh, so lock of deployment. Let's move on and talk about the handle. So the handle, of course, looks really, really cool. And the thing that I really probably like most about this particular design is how it gives you this really interesting mechanical detail. Okay, so it's it looks really cool and like, man, there's a lot going on. And yet it's still very, very simple. And, and so uh, it's it's extremely aesthetically attractive for that reason. The other cool thing about this knife is if you you know if you're into custom knives and you want to have something that's uniquely yours, well you've got a titanium lock bar here that you could have anodized in all kinds of different ways. I've even seen you know and I, maybe I haven't, but you know I could well imagine these as in other materials as well, mokotai or timascus or various things. Uh, not only that, but now you've got this. Scale, these scales down here that once again can be switched out for all kinds of different options. So you will see some pretty fancy 8015s out there. Um, I've seen some already and I'm sure there's more to come. Like there's a lot that you could do with the various components on this knife that make it, uh, that would make it look really, really crazy. For me, you know, my Andrew Demko and for my collection, I like knives that are practical and, and a little more usable. Uh, and so that's going to be where I kind of lean, but I know there'll be a lot of you who want to just go crazy with, you know, forged carbon fiber here and some kind of crazy material on the backspacer and, you know, different anodizing and all kinds of stuff. And, and so all of that stuff is possible. I do like this touch here, uh, Demco knives on the pivot. I kind of like that better than the blade. It leaves the blade to be just sterile and uh, let it kind of speak for itself. And then the maker's mark is right there on the pivot. And again, that's a pretty typical Andrew Demco type of thing. In terms of construction here, we have titanium liners, G10, and then of course the lock bars, titanium, steel on the pieces that are gonna interface that way. Uh, really nicely done, pretty cool materials. Of course, very strong. Now, very open, so very nice and easy to clean. You're not gonna have any issues with that. <clears throat> and of course, tough. Okay, so all of these things are overbuilt. When we talk about the comfort on this, I want you to notice the milling. Hold on, focus, there we go. I want you to notice the milling on the lock bar here. Um, it's all nicely rounded off as is the G10 so that in hand this feels really really good. The jimping is actually a little soft. Now with gloves on it tends to catch a little bit more. Uh, with my finger even pushed down pretty, yeah I guess it catches now. But if I if I push down really hard it catches. It's rounded enough that it's pretty comfortable. So I've got to say not too bad on the jimping. I do like the finger choil. It's just a small choil and that, that works really well. Because normally if I'm using the finger choil I'm just kind of coming up here and doing some fine little work like this. And because of the thinness of that edge this knife does work for those really fine little cutting tasks opening a bag of milk or something like that. Uh, so. I think the ergonomics here are a real win. And you can see that the handle is, you know, one of those handles that just doesn't matter how you grip it, it's gonna work pretty nicely. Okay. <clears throat> so that's construction and ergonomics. Now let's go ahead and do some comparisons. And I wanna have this little bit of a discussion with you guys. Um, <clears throat> when it comes to custom knives, it always begs the question, you know, why spend that money? There are tons of knives out there that are gonna function just as well. Um, <clears throat> that, that are going to cost a fraction of the price. And, and I guess my answer to that would be, you know, uh, why buy a custom paint? Why buy a, a, a painting that's done by an artist rather than just a print? Or, you know, why not just take a picture on your iPhone and, and print it off? Okay, well, because there's something about having this thing that's been created by an artist that the work and, and time and energy has been put into that's worth appreciating. Okay, uh, so while we get into these comparisons, I am going to show you both production and custom and high-end and low-end stuff that I think is kind of comparable and hopefully you'll be able to find something that you find interesting. Let's start off with a cold steel since we talked about that at the beginning. If what you want is just a hard use, very practical, very usable knife, it's hard to go wrong with a Recon 1. This is a knife that I bring out a lot because it's a tank of a knife and it's not that expensive. Uh, and so yeah, if you're going, Kevin, I just love that, but I can't imagine spending the kind of money that it costs for that knife. Uh, well, yeah, go look at a Recon 1 or an American Lawman or, or something along those lines. Even the new Spyderco Shaman or the, the Manix Lockback. Uh, there are lots of great sort of heavy duty, very practical knives. And certainly the Recon 1 is one of them. Also, everyone's kind of familiar with that. Uh, let's go ahead and pull out a Para 2 since same idea. Everyone kind of knows about the Para 2. And I want you to see that 
Although this knife is fairly heavily built, it's not super huge, okay? It's not all that much bigger than the Para 2. It's a bit bigger, but not anything crazy. Uh, what else have we got before we go into... Oh yeah, perfect. Uh, here's another knife, here's a ZT that I think falls into a similar vein of sort of being heavy duty, hard use. This is even heavier than this, okay? Uh, but if you're, if you're okay carrying something like this, uh, maybe you'd be okay with this. Uh, again, very practical, very usable, you know, just a knife that you can really get, feel very confident in. And that's that's where this guy fits in. Uh, next up, let's go to the Formax. And I think I'm gonna do a full on comparison between these two knives. Um, and maybe even make some comments about the the slightly smaller Formax that's out there now, which I you know I, I'm sure is still a great knife. Uh, <clears throat> honestly, I love both of these knives. Uh, this one I like a little bit more just because of some of the the extra features that are in there, the the uniqueness of it, the fact that the community was kind of involved in it. Uh, but both of these are very Demco designs. Both of them are great because they're hard use knives. They're very they're meant to really take a beating. Um, but they're also really well balanced. This will slice up an apple or chop down a tree, and I really, really like that. Of course, the price point is going to be significantly different as well. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, let's grab another custom knife, and then I've got a couple others that you're probably that make a, a natural comparison. So these knives to me are in a very similar vein. They're very well done. They're, they're of course full custom knives, uh, but they're definitely leaning on the hard use end of the spectrum. You know, they're meant to be the kind of knife that's just going to take whatever life throws at it. Both are very, very cool. Obviously the 8015 is maybe a little more unique. And actually, if you're one of those people who you go, I'd really like to try a custom knife, but man, I just can't, uh, can't pull the funds together or, or justify it. Uh, the Curtises are great because he does have knife of the day sales sometimes and it may take you a while, but eventually if you really watch, you can probably find a, an F3 for a, a little more affordable price for about the same price or maybe a little bit more than you'd pay for a mid-tech. And now let's go over to high-end production. I've got a couple here that I want to bring in. Of course, one obvious comparison would be the XM18 and another one is going to be the Inkosi. All right, uh, the Inkosi or the 25 are supposed to be sort of the heavy duty offerings from Chris Reeve Knives. Uh, I guess the Umnum's on as well, but uh, to me this is much more appealing than an Umnum's on. <clears throat> and these of course are, are similar in price point, uh, but again in a similar vein. They're just meant to be knives that you can really depend on, that they can really take a beating even though they're very well done. They're very, you know, the fit and finish and the quality and all of that is absolutely off the charts. And yet it's still a knife, and, and I would say that of just about every knife I've shown you here. Um, it's still a knife that you feel comfortable using. And I have had knives, and I even have some knives in my collection now where um, I like them and I, and I enjoy carrying them, but man, I'm really, really careful. These knives, even though they cost quite a bit, I don't feel that pressure to just be careful what you do with it and don't drop it and you know, you know, treat it like something, a fragile work of art. You know, these are works of art, but they're works of art that can really be used. So those are our last couple of comparisons for you. All right. What are my overall thoughts on this knife? Well, the reality is, you know, I know this knife is not going to be for everyone, but in terms of, you know, people who are into custom knives or even into mid techs and thinking about going toward a custom or just want that one sort of grail knife that's going to be the, the one that you carry every day and you leave to your kids, uh, I think this is a great option. It's heavy duty. It's amazing in terms of how it functions. It's definitely a discussion piece. I've shown a couple people this knife and they're like, wow, that is amazing. I've never seen anything like that. And, and it really does get a good conversation started, uh, even for non-knife people. You know, this is not, although it's, you know, it's got that heavy dutiness and, and high hard use element to it. It's not a really scary tactical knife, at least in my opinion. And so I've had a lot of good success sharing this knife with non-knife people as well. And so, yeah, I do think this is a real win. I think this is one of the coolest models out there right now. And, and you know, I'm really not into very many custom knives. There are a very, very short list uh, of custom knives that I would think about buying. And certainly, 
uh, since I did buy this one, uh, this was on the very top of that list, and I am super, super stoked to have it. Uh, you'll be, you know, you'll be seeing this knife, I'm sure, quite often in videos as I can think of various comparisons to make with it. And uh, as I said, I do want to do a full comparison with the Formax and discuss that a little bit, as well as maybe some others. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we will talk to you soon.